It's a freezing cold morning here. We're joined by Terry again, returned to the scene where he had a massive hit of fish back in November um, when we were doing the video for the tungsten loading braid. It's freezing cold. We were quite surprised that it weren't frozen this morning, weren't we, Terry? Yeah, Tara? proper hard frost. Luckily it's not, and Terry's had a couple of line bites already, so it's looking promising. Now, as you can see, today we're delighted to show you the new range of ESP cryogen carp hooks. These have been a bit of a labour of love for a few years. Um, there's three patterns to start off with, the classic, the gripper and the stiff rigger. We'll show you them in a bit more detail in a minute. But firstly, why the name cryogen? Well, it's to do with a new production process that has resulted ultimately in a range of hooks that are incredibly strong and durable. Now the cryogen refers to a new tempering process we've used, cryogenic tempering. Now the hooks are made in the usual fashion using heat tempering. They're using an extreme temperature up to sort of 800 degrees Celsius. This is what's used on most hooks. And then we've used a further process called cryogenic tempering that takes the hook down to a temperature of minus 195 degrees centigrade over a long period of about 24 hours and then they're brought back up to an ambient temperature again over a slow process of hours and what this does it's used in various applications to enhance the strength of steel formula one engine parts is a classic example and it it basically reduces the stress increases wear resistance and strength. Um, so that's what we've done to these new hooks. And as a result, during the testing over the last two years, they've proven incredibly strong, haven't they, Terry? Really strong, yeah. I mean, we've barely had any reports of a point going over, let alone gaping. So, and various anglers, probably about a dozen or so anglers, including myself and Terry, have been using them over the last two years. And loads of big carp have been caught and well, you know, we haven't had one gape yet, so we reckon they're, it's difficult to quantify, but 30 to 40% stronger than any hooks we've done in the past. So strength-wise, they are unbelievable without having to go up in the wire gauge. So a lot of, you know, strong hooks on the market, you sort of look at a snag hook or something like that, they're usually really thick in the wire with rank barbs, stubby points, these ones we've been able to use the same sort of wire gauges we've used in the past but the end result is a hook that's 30 to 40 percent stronger so you can have incredible confidence in the strength of these hooks now what ones have you been using terry the first ones we had in with size five stiff riggers weren't they yeah um <clears throat> they were the first samples we got in started using them and pretty... that's what i was using at Ashmead, the size five stiff riggers and like, I mean, I've, I was always really happy with the Mark IIs and the Mark yeah. I stiffer because I've used them for years, like, you know, and never had a problem. Um, but, say never had a problem, from time to time you'd get a fish in and they'd be ever so slightly gaped or the point would have gone over, you know. But I never lost fish through it, yeah. do you know what I mean? But uh, obviously mixing with other carp angles and that, you know, I've had plenty of friends and that say to me, you know, they're not really strong enough, mate, like, you know, they keep opening mm. out. I think a lot of it's just down to how balanced your tackle is, you yeah. know, and if you're yeah. using real cod sticks, do you know what I mean? <laughs> broomsticks and that, then yeah, you're going to open them out yeah. and that. But I can promise you, you're definitely not going to have that problem with these ones. These are really, really, really strong. And it's not just a case of they don't gape. I've not had a point go over either. You know, obviously they'll dull, like any, yeah, they'll yeah. dull in time if you hit a rock or something. But you know, like with the old ones, you'd get a fish in sometimes and probably two or three mil of the point could have folded, yeah, like, yeah. you know. But I'm not had that with these at all. No. I had a sort of classic example of that. Oh. With the classics, funnily enough, um, back in the summer, and usually whenever I catch a carp, I change the hook. It's just sort of habit, really. Um, but I caught uh, using the size uh, size four. I caught a forty pounder one morning from a, a tricky pit. I had to go out in the boat to get it out of the weed. Yeah, it was a real, real sort of war of attrition to get it out. And uh, when I checked the rig after unhooking it and everything, the, the point was, the hook was, you know, it looked brand new. Like straight was, out of the packet. Yeah, straight yeah. out of the packet. The rig was fine, that was on the tungsten loaded. So I put it back out and about five or six hours later, I had another fish, um, a 43 pounder, again nailed. 
and I thought, you know, 240s on the same work. <laughs> yeah. Never done that before. So, um, what I found as well, um, I've been using the beak point ones a bit as well. Grippers, yeah. And uh, I found that, you know, sometimes when the hook rigs out for a long period of time, you're really in, and even if you haven't touched a rock or a stone or something, the point's almost corroded away. Yeah. Some silty bottoms do that, acidic mm. bottoms and what have you. I've had it less with them. Yeah, yeah. So, I think that the whole process is definitely helping, like, you know. Yeah. So, the three patterns in the range. Um, the classic, which is like a refined version of the old big T, um, straight point, interned eye, and what we've done is we've inclined the point slightly more to give it a stronger shape. The point's longer and finer, so really nice and sharp. The gripper, which I suppose is a, is a sort of combination of the, the old T6 and the D7, beaked point, interned eye again, so if you prefer a beaked point for your bottom bait rigs especially, perfect. Um, and then of course the, the one that we first started using, the stiff rigger, which again is a refinement of the, uh, the Mark I and the Mark II, slightly more inclined so it's a stronger shape, um, longer finer point and incredibly strong without having to go up in the wire gauge and obviously on a pop-up hook you don't really want to be going up in the wire gauge and adding weight. So that's the first three patterns um, we're introducing so far, there'll be more to follow later in the year hopefully, but if you're looking for some new car hooks this spring that you can be rest assured incredibly, incredibly strong and durable, then look no further than the Crydon. Morning Tell. Oi, oi. Well done mate, we've had All a right couple touch. in. I wasn't expecting that in that cold, do you know what I mean? Oh, it's cold. On a brew, cold, yeah? Oh, I love one, thanks mate. Do you know what, when we were doing that filming yesterday, them little look clips, I was sat here and I was absolutely chilled to the bone. And I didn't want to say one, anything. It? But like I had, I had a thermal t-shirt on, a t-shirt over the top of that, yeah. two jumpers and a wind stopper, and it was still cutting right yeah, through me. It straight, in, straight in our face here, wasn't it, yesterday? But um, yeah, nothing, uh, all day. You know, we had them few little blips and blob yeah. bleeps in the daytime, which I thought were liners, but mm. there was rad about, you know, yeah. so I'm not sure. Um, and then I think, if you remember, just before you left, yeah. I saw something slosh That's out, it. but I missed it. Do you know when yeah. you, I had my eyes on the water and I looked away, looked back, and there was a big set of rings. And I walked, I kept my eyes on it. You know, sometimes yeah. you get, when you're over deep water, sometimes you get a trail of bubbles mm. and it can be up to 15 seconds later sometimes, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? So I kept my eyes on it and walked back, walked back, walked back, felt around, got my old binos out got the binos on it and I was looking at the trail of bubbles and then this side of it, I see a trail come towards the baited spot. Right. So it looked carpy, do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. I hadn't seen it, I thought it won a pipe, definitely won a tench. It was but it got minus, up, didn't it? It yeah, was minus gold knows what yeah, that yeah. morning, so I wouldn't have thought it was a tench. Mm. Um, anyway, after you left, I see a couple of other similar sloshes, something else in the night, no action though. No. Got up this morning, all the indicators had risen to the top, yeah. like they do with the undertoes, yeah. you yeah. know? Um, walked out to the road, thought, oh, well, you know, I better start wrapping up. And then just completely out of the blue, like left hand rod just melted off. Brilliant. Nice old battle, like they all are here in the deep water. Got it in, beautiful dark common, 25 and a half pound. I do. So, but you know what it's like in the winter when you catch one, yeah. there's others about. Yeah, yeah. Especially bearing in mind I'd baited up five days before That's and I put in, I, secretly I was sat here thinking I overbaited, I shouldn't have put in as much, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. But we had that mild spell. Mm. immediately after Last I'd baited week, yeah. and I think they got on it then and so they kept coming back mm. even though it's gone really cold. But uh, Anyway, with the idea of more out there I thought I'm getting that bait straight back out on the mark. So I got that one back out and like you do, I reeled the other two in yeah. <laughs> either side of it, do you know yeah, what I mean? Uh, 20 minutes later it was away again and you know when you, you, you just know it's a big fish, yeah. do you know what I mean? It was just a different battle altogether right. and it was like heavy going away, no, none of that. You know, yeah, like yeah. you get over 20 or something, mm. you know, it was just a dead heavyweight. I thought, oh, cocker, you know, and it's 80 yards away, yeah, do you know what I mean? Water, and eventually yeah. I see the old line start to cut up in the water, like, you know. But by now, it's had a bit of line off me, the stretch in the line, the fact mm. that it's coming up. It's like over 100 yards away from yeah, me, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I've got the island each side of me, and I'm thinking, if this swing's left or right, yeah, it's going to do me, you yeah, know? Yeah. Like, but I've done the old side strain like tip right down low yeah. and for some reason when I'm fishing at range they're always coming easier like yeah. that you know but I got it all the way yeah exactly yeah. you know yeah. but I got it all the way back 
I had it on for over 20 minutes, honestly. My arm felt like it was going to drop off, yeah. like, you know, and, and, and I'd seen it for about the last five minutes as well, you know, yeah. and I thought, that's a good one, don't drop off, don't drop off. Like, but yeah, eventually got it into the net and, well, I'll show you in a minute, mate, it's an absolute belter, like, you know, really, really good. Yeah. Nailed, properly hooked, you know, never ever coming off, like, you know, so. That was on what, the size six gripper? That was on the size six gripper, yeah, the, old, the ones with the beak point yeah, and uh, just, just nailed, like, yeah, you know. Yeah. And I, what, I, um, when I unhooked it, like I was very quick to get another rig out and all the rest yeah. of it I wanted to, but I checked the hook and the hook point had dulled slightly, you right. know, like like they would, we've just yeah, caught yeah. one, you know yeah. what I mean? But I thought, oh, I hope that that's not type, the type of bottom, you know, yeah, on the point. So, yeah. And when I reeled in the other two, they were absolutely fine. All I had to do was change the baits and put yeah. them straight back out, like, you know, so, yeah, yeah. Right. Perfect. Well, there's always a chance of another one yet, so uh, I think we'll have a, have a cup of tea and then have a look. Definitely. Brilliant. Well done, mate. What a beauty. Proper chaff for that. More chaff because of the time of the year, you know, end of February. Beautiful. Off you go. Beautiful, beautiful carp. I can tell you now I wasn't expecting to catch this one this trip. When we got here, it was proper cold. Like, I actually thought the lake would be frozen. So, well chuffed. Well, that is just absolutely beautiful. I'm proper blown away. God, solid, proper male carp. Oh, bit of reed, get that off my finger. That is a proper carp. Let's get her back. Through the old tubulars. I was going to say off she goes, but I reckon off he goes with that one. 